Coach is still muted, by the way, guys. We can't hear him. There we go. Thought I hit the mute button. Apparently, I didn't. Nope, we're good now. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Chris, I guess just to start out, gen general thoughts on, on this one. Um, it was a bit of a – I think neither team was, was quite dynamic today. I think we both – I don't know, it was a little bit lacking, like lacking a bit of precision at times. Um, obviously, I think we were, we were a better team and, and we were able to move the, move the ball around. But even then, it wasn't as precise as we would like it to be. But um, I think generally a fairly comfortable afternoon for us at, at five o'clock kickoff, which was you know, a little, little different time for us. So it was interesting to see how the guys uh, reacted to that. But yeah, we, I mean, we were able to, to kind of get our possession game going and, and all the great moments we had was we put you know, a series of passes together before we went in. Um, the bad moments we had, we were just kind of bombing forward, um, trying to get in. So I think, you know, overall a good performance. Uh, nice to see the, the goals come and obviously learned the lessons from uh, Kentucky and sort of how to break down an organized defense. And I think we did a better job tonight. Definitely, definitely at moments of exploiting the space um, and creating the space for ourselves by holding position. So uh, decent performance. Yeah, nice to, nice to get back on the goals and nice to, to keep another clean sheet. With both the goals coming from Pedro tonight, he's a guy, if you look back over the last five, maybe six games, it seems like things are really starting to heat up for him. It, it, it's really starting to click. I know he's a guy that's been very good for this team for, for several years now. But this season, what has he meant to this team? And, and what's the key, you think, to this little hot streak that he's been on the last you know five, six games? Well, I, I, I put it first and foremost down to his mentality. You know, he's a captain, he's a leader. Um, he kind of espouses every philosophy that we have back into the locker room in terms of possession, um, style of football, when to penetrate. He's been with the program a long time. And I think, you know, he, at the beginning of the season, I think him, like everybody else, it was such a quick turnaround. And, you know, we needed to take a, few, take a minute to sort of rest and, and heal up uh, through the summer. So I think fitness has been a gradual thing for the team and sharpness, you know, has been a gradual thing for the team. And, and you've seen in the last few games, we started to get sharper and tighter on defense and, uh, able to limit the opposition chances and, and goals, and, and then we're able to build from that foundation. And, and Pedro's sort of uh, vital to that. So he's just getting stronger and stronger, and he has all the experience and all the leadership skills to to take us all the way. Coach, talk about Oliver tonight. Four saves, no goals allowed. He's he's kind of been on a hot streak lately with like not not with clean sheets. I believe this is his third consecutive in a row. What's contributed to that? You think, Coach? I think it's definitely you know the the Kentucky game. Um, and, and Akron, he had a couple of saves to make one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But tonight, he didn't really have anything to, to save. Um, I think that was a great team defensive performance. We switched on. We were aggressive. Jan Eric in front of him was brilliant today. Gabby Alvarez had a great game in full-backs, and our two centre-backs were very assured. So I think today it was kind of a team effort. Um, you know, we got the pressure right up front. It makes the defending easier through the back, and then Ollie was just kind of scooping things up. So... You know, two great performances where we had to come up and make big saves, but but not that big save tonight. Um, but he was just assured. He was, if you look at his possession play, how he helped us in the build up, um, his passes in the midfield. It was all it was all good stuff from him on that side of the ball today. Chris, you mentioned the quick turnaround between the spring and this fall, and how it's kind of taken the guys a little while to to sort of round into form and get sharp with this stretch run coming up, leading into the uh, the conference tournament. I guess just what, what's the message going forward from here now that you guys have, seem like you're kind of playing more of a, a the familiar Marshall style soccer the last few weeks. Yeah, I think, I think, look, the turnaround was quick. So, so fitness wasn't where it really needed to be. And that was okay. You know, we achieved something fantastic and, you know, we, I think we've all individually and then as a group had to ask ourselves, what do you do when you achieve your dreams? What do you do when you've achieved everything you ever wanted to do in, in, in sports? Right when you when you achieve that that national championship, and so we've all had to wrestle with it, and then we all I think we've all kind of come back to the conclusion that it's about chasing perfection. It's about the process. We've got to be back in love with the process of of waking up and eating right and training hard and, and understanding the tactics and and really sort of getting back to basics and loving. Just we get across the white line. We get to play soccer today. You know that's it's not a bad life, and kind of we've got to do that to the best of our ability. And that's what we find our joy. We find our joy. We find our um, character in the process, you know, and so that's where we've all sort of started to come back. And you've seen over the last few games, I think we've all started to, to gel again, and we've started to uh, have a strong defensive foundation. We've kind of come back to the process a little bit. 
that on top of also being fit now because the, the preseason is far too short normally and, and it kind of caught us this year a little bit. So with the fitness and then just getting back to the process and being in love with the process, enjoying the process of being a team and, and working on and, and getting to play soccer together is, you know, the thing that's kind of come back to the forefront of our minds, I believe. Coach, I remember we spoke before West Virginia about this rank stretch. You guys said you guys take a day by day, day game by game. You're now done through this rank stretch. Now you're heavily in a conference play with Old Dominion and Florida Atlantic in the next couple of weeks. So how do you guys try to now maintain from this very tough stretch in your schedule to now conference play where the games are, you know, there's points on the line and the conference tournament seating starts to matter? Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to be tough. You know, we'll have to go back to Road Warriors. Again, we play, we've got three days uh, in between, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday before we play ODU. So that, that's still sort of part of this stretch of, Really, we can't train too much. And then we've got to get on that bus and drive six to eight hours out to Norfolk, depending on the traffic. So we have to manage, we have to manage that. We have to manage our bodies. And then after you know Norfolk, we've got to take really, really seriously. I think, you know, that first 15, 20 minutes of the game, making sure that our legs are off the bus, making sure that we're popping the ball around. Again, another afternoon game. You know, we've got to make sure we are sharp and up for it. Um for that first 15 minutes. So so really not looking further ahead than the beginning of the of the half against ODU. You. you know, that'll set the tone and then we can build from there. You guys good? I think so. That's all I had. Thanks, yep. Scott. Thanks, yep. Coach. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Congratulations.